will be reviewing microscopic spermatic cord denervation in the adult male. This video is through the University of Utah Division of Urology, Center for Men's Health and Reconstructive Urology. As you can see, the patient has had prior right groin surgery. This consisted of a subinguinal varicocelectomy. We have therefore marked out an area above this to give access to the inguinal canal should this be required. After making our incision sharply, electric cautery is used to dissect through sub the subcutaneous fat layers as well as scarpous fascia. As you can see, there is a significant amount of fibrotic tissue uh, requiring slow and meticulous dissection to avoid inadvertently damaging the spermatic cord. The tissue above the spermatic cord is then gently retracted. The assistant then places tension on the testicle, allowing for visualization of the spermatic cord. Once the spermatic cord is identified, a babcock is used to gently grasp the cord and deliver this within the surgical field. A right angle clamp is then placed underneath the spermatic cord. A pin rose is then wrapped around the spermatic cord to allow for tensioning of the spermatic cord. The tissue underneath the spermatic cord is then evaluated for additional tissue that should be included in the denervation. The pin rose is replaced accordingly to include this tissue. The Penrose drain is then clamped to the drape to allow adequate elevation of the spermatic cord into the surgical field. For atypical incisions, such as the groin incision, additional retraction may be ne necessary for adequate exposure. The microscope is then docked at the patient's bedside. The external and internal spermatic fascia is then opened using electrocautery. We then proceed with our dissection through the spermatic cord contents. Our goal is to identify key structures including the lymphatics, vascular structures, as well as the vas deferens and basal packet. Our goal is to preserve at least three lymphatic structures as well as the main testicular artery. Here, a lymphatic structure has been identified. This will be kept out of the way using a vessel loop.
gas deference has now been identified. It is grasped and delivered, allowing for easy dissection off the surrounding vasal package structures. In patients for whom fertility is not a concern, transection of the vas deferens is recommended as this carries a large number of nervous tissue fibers. The vasal artery and vein will be preserved until the main testicular artery has been identified. When the testicular artery cannot be easily visualized, a microdoppler may be used to identify the general region of the testicular artery. Here, Normal saline is used to increase conduction and allow for better identification of the artery. The testicular artery has been confirmed and is located along the bottom portion of the screen. The vasal packet is also evaluated and there is noted to be good pulsatile waveforms. proceed with dissecting through the spermatic fascia, identifying any lymphatic vessels, and transecting the remainder tissue. This allows for better tensioning of the spermatic cord and therefore better visualization of these structures. Bipolar electrolytes. 
structure cautery is used to transect the non-vascular appearing tissue. When venous structures are identified, these are tied off with either 3-0 or 4-0 silk suture. Vessel loops are used to retract our key structures such as these lymphatics to aid in further dissection. Microdoppler is used to evaluate thicker cord structures such as this nest of venous vessels to allow for easier identification of the testicular artery.
with the venous structures transected, the main testicular artery becomes apparent and can be seen at the bottom of the screen. Since the testicular artery has been confirmed to be patent, the vasal packet is now transected. Here is shown the final product of three preserved lymphatics and one preserved testicular artery with all surrounding structures, including nervous tissue structures, being transected.